Disclaimer. This video's information is being provided for informational, educational, and general interest purposes only. The information in this video is not intended to shock, enrage, or otherwise provoke the viewer. The sole purpose of this video was to raise awareness of true crime-related events. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. I've never seen it. I mean, we smoke cigarettes. I'm not talking about that. I said drugs, illegal drugs. Uh, if you don't need to protect him, I'm just getting. I'm getting a feel for you. If you're going to be honest, I just need you to be honest with me. Don't overread into any of my questions. Okay, I promise you. Um, so he wakes you up at eight and tells you what. Because she's claiming you were awake and you were there when she carried him, brought him back down the stairs. Is she incorrect there or is she making that up? James Hamilton, 43 at the time, was given a kidnapping charge and was given a minimum sentence of 8 years and a maximum sentence of 12 years by a judge. Hamilton was sentenced to 3 years in prison for endangering children and 1 year for gravely mistreating a corpse. He was given 219 days in prison. The sentences must be served in order. As part of a plea agreement in relation to the February death of James Hutchinson, the young son of his girlfriend Brittany Gosney, Hamilton pleaded guilty in August to kidnapping, gross abuse of a corpse, and two counts of child endangerment. Gosney attempted to abandon Hutchinson and her other two children, ages 9 and 7, at Rush Run Wildlife Area in Preble County, which is northwest of Middletown. Hutchinson was killed in the attempt. According to reports, Hutchinson attempted to re-enter the car as Gosney was driving away but was dragged and run over instead. She informed the detectives that when she went back to check on Hutchinson, he had passed away. She then picked up his body and brought her other two kids back to her Middletown home. According to reports, Gosney accused Hamilton of pressuring her to give up her children. Hamilton, according to the police, was not present when Hutchinson was killed. On February 28th, Gosney and Hamilton took the boy's body and dumped it in the Ohio River close to Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Later that morning, they reported the boy missing. The whereabouts of Hutchinson's body remain unknown. Gosney, a 29-year-old Middletown resident, was given a life sentence last month. In 21 years, she will be eligible for parole. Good morning. Here I got some drink. My name's Scott, and I'll be giving you a polygraph. Let me first say I'm sorry for your loss. You know, what a tragedy. Sorry we've gone through this, and uh, I just can't imagine. I got three kids of my own, and I don't know what you're going through, and hopefully we can figure that out together because. <clears throat> Obviously, this isn't like you. You got three kids. So, something went wrong. Something happened. And my job is to get another statement from you, giving you a polygraph. And uh, hopefully, you pass that polygraph. If you work with me as a team, you will. And we can say, this is what happened. There's no more need for speculation. Because that's what people do in situations like this, is they speculate that maybe there's something more to this. But by working together, you and I will be able to show that, no, there's nothing more to this. This is really what happened. Okay? Does that sound like a good plan? You going to work with me? All right, awesome. Like I said, I am so sorry for your loss. That's just a terrible thing. <clears throat> what 
ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਜੀਤ ਦੇਣੇ So basically, this will help me in the long run, too? Well, it'll, it'll, it'll help say this is the truth, because you've changed the story a few times. Because we went from uh, he's just missing to... Yeah, because that's what the other person wanted to tell. Right. So finally, we'll be able to say this is the truth. You know, she's being honest. She's an honest person. We can trust her. Uh, so it'll, it'll help that. It, it'll help get the truth out. Okay. All right? Okay. This says, I, Brittany Gosney, uh, voluntarily, without threats, duress, coercion, force, promise of immunity, agree and request to take a pre... I'm sorry, I've got the wrong form. That's for if you want to be a police officer. You don't want to be a police officer, do you? Coercion, force, promise of immunity, or reward, agree to take a polygraph examination for the mutual benefit of myself and or officers or agents of the Middletown Police Department. I fully realize that I'm not required to take this examination, that you have the right to remain silent, that anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law, that you have the right to consult with a lawyer before and during any questioning and have a lawyer present with you while you're being questioned, that if you can't afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you free before any questioning and that you may stop talking to me or any other police officer any time during questioning. Do you understand all of your rights as I read them to you? Mm-hmm. Now, any these rights, do you wish to talk to me without having a lawyer present? Yeah. It says, I do hereby authorize the examiner to de- disclose both orally and in writing the examination results and opinions to the investigating officers, prosecutors, and or agency requesting for investigation. In addition, I also represent that not only am I in good mental and physical condition, but that I know of no mental or physical ailment that might be impaired by this examination. If you do not understand this form completely, do not sign it, but have the examiner explain it to you thoroughly or seek other competent advice. So basically what you said, no medical issues? Yeah, I'm just going to ask you some medical questions. Uh, Basically, I want to know what kind of medication you are on because that can affect the examination results. Uh, I want to make sure that you don't have seizures. And, uh, just medical questions that would, that would 
would explain some of the results. Because what I'm looking at in a polygraph examination is your blood pressure, heart rate, sweat gland activity. There's certain medications that will affect. Well, they didn't ask me, but I have a, a rare heart disease, mm -hmm. like heart that tends to be fast. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good thing to know, isn't it? Uh, stuff like that. And it'll just help me when I'm looking at the charts when we're done. Say, well, you know, Brittany, she she has a rare heart disease that causes her heart to beat fast. So that would explain why her heart's beating fast throughout the entire test. So that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Hi, Spam, what's the and what's your address? 507 Crossroad Street. How old are you? 29. And your birthday? 2592. And education, how far did you go in school? To 11th. 11th grade? Why didn't you graduate? I didn't want to repeat everything I had already done. Well, why is that? I don't really know. I just, I did all my work in 11th grade, and then they told me I needed to redo it all back over, and I was like, why should I have to do that? So they wanted you to redo the 11th grade, and you just gave up after that? Are you working on your GED or anything? No. Do you read and write okay? Do you, um, do you have a disability there? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's your disability? Um, I've had a learning disability since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Some words I can't understand. Mm -hmm. If I say any words you don't understand, just just make sure you say Scott. My name's Scott. Say uh, Scott. I don't understand that, and I'll explain it to you. Okay? Okay. Because it's really important. Yeah, there's like a lot of questions I don't understand. I try to ask to figure out mm -hmm. what you're trying to ask me. Right. Yeah, don't be afraid ever while we're working together because we got to be a team. Don't be afraid ever to stop me and uh, ask me to clarify something, okay? Okay. All right. Now, you seem to be able to, I'm com com communicating with you very well today. So you seem like you're pretty smart, right? Mm hmm Okay. All right. <clears throat> I used to do cashier when I was a li for a living. Mm hmm So. How'd you like that? It was fun. Mm -hmm. Are you working anywhere now? No. But you were a cashier. How long ago did you work? Um, since 2018. 2018, where'd you work? Um, I worked at Kroger's. Kroger's? One of my at children Jan. works at Kroger's. Um, family Dollar. Kroger's and Family Dollar. How long did you work at uh, Kroger's? <sighs> Well, I started working at Kroger's in 2016, so I worked there for three years. All right, so, you know, so you did pretty well there. Why did you leave? Um, the kids cut hours. Hmm. How about the family dollar? How long did you work there? Um, I want to say three, four months. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you like that? The, the manager was sexual, talking to me, sexual, following me, showing up at my house. Oh, seriously? Yes. And you just left it? Yes. Oh. They didn't want to do nothing about it, so I just mm. quit. Are you married? No. Okay. How many children you got? You got three? I have four originally. Well, tell me about that. Um, I was French when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I got pregnant. So you gave up one child then? Uh, well, I was, they told me I would be my best instrument since I was so young. How old were you? Uh, Twelve. Oh my gosh. You had a, kind of a tragic life. Okay, so you had a child when you were twelve, and then you uh, had three children. What are your children's names? You had three other children. I have three kids. Mm -hmm. Um, 
King James. King James. And is James the oldest? No, he's the baby. Always oh, the baby. Okay, and then who's the oldest? How old is she? Uh, Mary B. Tinsley, she's nine. Nine? Mm-hmm. And then she is? Seven. And then James was six, right? Yes. Okay. And then the child that you gave up? You, you I didn't give her up till she was um, a year and a half, so. Oh, so what was her name? Because you named her and everything. Yes, her I name. Named her. How old is now? Do you know? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Do you ever have contact with her? Actually, I too. Mm-hmm. But, but they upload pictures on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And how, did, how did you get? Uh, how did what was that process? Um. Well, when I was in a, um. Well, I was I was in a group home. Then I went to like individual foster homes. Mm-hmm. Well, I was working, coming home to take care of the baby, and going to school all at the same time. Right. And um, they just told me that I'm too young to even understand how to even take care of a child. Right. So I'm a, still a child myself, so how am I supposed to take care of another child? And they deemed that I was trying my best. Right. But they just broke it down to me and explained, like, you're not going to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. And so then I signed her over for an open adoption. Mm-hmm. So that way I would be able to see her still, right. get pictures, and I've still got okay. nothing. When's the last time you talked to her? Since I made her up. Oh, seriously. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was difficult. Uh, have you ever had a polygraph operation before? No, I haven't had a trouble ever. Polygraph examination. Uh, yeah, that's what the detective said. Detective Hoover said you've never been in trouble before. This is baffling how something like this happens. And, and that's what we're going to try to figure out together, is how something like this happened. Um, how, um, who brought you up? Who raised you? My mom. Your mom? Was your dad in the picture? Do you want me to give you a clean up? Thank you. My mom is the one that raised me. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Betty. Cosme? Yes. My dad was there. Well, they were married, and then I don't know how they got the divorce or whatever, but they got a divorce. Mm-hmm. But they were still married when they had us, me and my two sisters. Do you got two sisters? Yes. Yeah. What are their names? Lisa and Heather. Where are you in the birth order? Uh, like... Are like you a middle child? Yes, oldest middle? I'm in the middle. Okay. And they could even say, I would never hurt my kids. Yeah, but something went wrong, and that's what we're going to figure out. Right. Um, so you're a middle child. Your mother raised you. Who do you think had the biggest influence in your life as far as teaching you the difference between right and wrong? Well, my mom had me with my stepdad, mm-hmm. and I don't know what happened, but I got put in the state. Well, I was with my step mom, my real mom, and my dad, my stepdad, and then she gave me up and signed me over to my dad and my step mom. Okay. What's your dad's name? Charles Godney. Okay. How old were you in that? Um, I don't, I was little, I didn't. Okay. Um, but yeah, she, he, she, he, my stepmom and my real dad had let me get raped. Like they were paying this guy mm-hmm. to rape, well, Basically, they were allowing it. He was paying them money and all 
to rape me. Did your dad go to prison for that, I hope? My dad's paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And he had a real bad stroke. So. My dad wasn't really there all the time, so it was mostly my stepmom. What's her name? Margaret. Margaret. Did Margaret go to prison? She. No. Dad didn't do nothing. How about the guy that raped you? Did he go to prison? Yes. Well, he went to prison, though. Is he still locked up? What's his no, name? No, he just. Uh, George. Mm -hmm. They call him Pete. You said he was just released? Um, I don't know when it was released, but I know he's not in jail anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you have any grandparents that were influenced in your life? Uh, like my my mom's uh, mom, mm -hmm. um, my grandma. Was she ever there for you? We went and visited her. Mm -hmm. So after you were raped at your dad's house, what happened then? Did you go back to your mom? No, they made the guy that raped me take me out of the state with the little girl because I had the little girl already. Right. And they took me to Georgetown. To, I don't know where it was, but somewhere in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And from that another two fun kids got called involved something like that. So they came looking for me because they went to the house, asked where I was at. Who's they? My stepmom and my um, real dad, but my real dad wasn't there. So, right. and he told him he didn't really know what was even going on mm -hmm. because he was always gone. Right. But. Um, they went to Georgetown and picked me up. Mm -hmm. I got a phone call. They told me to run. Where am I running to? I know nothing around here. Where am I going to? Right. And I was like, it's better for me to just stay here, deal with whatever. And then I got took in, and then I went to a group on the first. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, after that, I went to individual um, <coughs> houses, individual people that had foster homes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Where, when you were in eleventh grade and you dropped out, were you in a foster home at that time? No. Well, yeah, there? actually. Because I was in middle of school then. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And now, you live on Crawford Street. Is mm -hmm. that your home? Or is that somebody else's home? That's mine. That's in my name. It's in your name? Are you buying? Are you renting? I'm renting. You rent? Okay. So, uh, your, your boyfriend, mm -hmm. his name is, what's his name? James. James moved in with you. Well, we both was living in a house uh -huh. because we both had nowhere to go. Right. So we went and stayed at hotels because he couldn't see me on the street with the children. Right. So um, him and his wife had a big whatever. Mm -hmm. They basically separated, but they're still married. They're still married. Um. But they separated, and they've been separated for most of a year now. Um, they, his wife was accusing me and him of doing stuff that we wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. So, and then um, we started basically forming feelings for each other, and that's where it started off at. Well, he had took me to the hospital because with my anxiety that I had. I had a real bad panic attack. Like I couldn't sleep. I couldn't go back to sleep. I couldn't do nothing. Right. And my heart rate was just off the charts. Mm -hmm. And I had no choice but to go to the emergency room. And he had went with me instead of my brief, my actual boyfriend at that time going with me. 
Okay. So he kind of stepped in and helped yeah. out through this difficult time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Your physical condition right now, would you say you're in poor, fair, or good physical condition? Like uh, your health, your overall health. Good. I mean, I'm all the shots. Huh? I'm just not took my medicine today and tired. We'll, we'll talk about medicine here at the very end. Have you had any injuries or surgeries in the last six months? No. Okay. Are you in any pain or discomfort right now? Okay. Are you pregnant? I don't know. You don't know? Are you late? How late? A month. A month late? How did you get that checked? I told them, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Did they check you here? Uh, you don't know. Well, I mean, you can let them know if, if you're having any issues. Okay. Have you had a meal in the last 24 hours? Um, Have you had anything to eat? You yeah. probably had something to eat this morning. Yeah. Well, I didn't eat this morning. I went back to sleep. I was so tired. Mm -hmm. How did you sleep last night? Poor, fair, or good? Poor, poor. How many hours of sleep did you get? I don't even know. I don't even know how long. I don't even know why I got put in there, so. Yeah. <laughs> Did you sleep some? Yes. You seem, you're, like I said, you're not falling asleep on me, so you seem like you're a little rested. Have you been a patient in the mental hospital? No. Are you seeing a psychiatrist or psychologist? What's that? A therapist. No. Oh, very good. See, that's exactly what you're supposed to do, is if you don't understand anything, ask me. Do you have a heart condition? Yes. And do you take any medication for that? No. Okay. Besides your heart beating fast, is there any other issue? I have asthma. That's about it. Okay, so you have asthma. Do you have an inhaler? Yes. Uh, do you have high or low blood pressure? No. Do you have seizures? No. Back problems? What is it? Back problems. You probably move your back. No. Okay. Hearing problems? Sometimes I can't hear or hear anything. Well, tell me about that. Well, a lot of times anymore I have to ask somebody, like, they're sitting like right next to me. I'm like, what did you say? Mm -hmm. I don't know. If I've never had my hearing tested, okay. checked out, nothing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm going death some. Okay. Do you think you're zoning out or there's an actual hearing problem? You don't know. I don't. Okay. If you're not 100% sure of what I'm asking you, just ask me to repeat. I'm never going to get upset about that. Okay. I just, I, my mother-in-law lives with me. She's 93. Oh, my gosh, I have to repeat questions of her all the time. So I'm used to dealing with people that can't hear very well. Okay. Are you a smoker? Yes. Have you had any alcohol in the last 24 hours? Don't do alcohol. Okay, now we're going to talk about medications. What kind of medication have you taken in the last 24 hours, either illegal or legal? Uh, the only thing I've taken was my legal drug that's prescribed to me, which is the droxetine for anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, Sertraline for allergies. What that, what's that called again? Sertraline. Sertraline. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I'm trying to remember my meds. Uh -huh. It's hard to remember. I take a lot of meds. Um, I take stomach pills. I don't know the name of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I take single air for breathing while I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. And another um, anxiety nighttime night. So two different anxiety pills? Yes. Okay. So one I take three times a day to help drop to me. That's three times a day. When's the last time you took that? Um, yesterday morning. So it's been more than 24 hours probably. Depending on the time. It was around eight. Around eight o'clock. So, around eight sixteen now. So, have you taken any pills in the last twenty-four hours? Okay. 
You're a bitch. Take a polygraph. All right. Now let's talk about what happened. And uh, we need to start from the very beginning on this. So, why don't you tell me what happened? I don't want to put any words in your mouth. I want you to just tell a story to me. And then I'll have some questions about that story. Okay. It was... Well, it was Friday going to Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. Me and the boyfriend was having an argument. Mm-hmm. Well, the kids were... And the boyfriend's kids. name is... James. Mm-hmm. Do you want to put his last name to their booth? Yeah, but better, James. Hamilton. Hamilton, okay. We were having an argument. Um, he was complaining that I constantly don't discipline my children. Mm-hmm. Because I'd rather not. Right. I'd rather just make them stand in the corner for a field mm-hmm. than put my hands on my children. Right. Um, and he told me I needed to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. And he's been telling me this for, since we moved in there. Mm-hmm. So we moved in there in February. He's been telling me a whole month. Mm-hmm. Uh, he told me he was he wasn't mentally stabilized to be taking dealing with children and I didn't know what he meant. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he had told me to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. So I basically did what he asked. I took them to, what was it I told, Rush Run? Rush Run, yeah. Rush Run Lake. Mm-hmm. Well, he told me Rush Run, so mm-hmm. that's what I typed in my GPS. Mm-hmm. Well, then I had called him and said, I'm lost. Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to do? I'm fixing to come back home. Right. Um, well, he said, just come back home twice to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I said, you're insisting on me getting rid of them, so that's what I'm going to do for you. Because right. he said, if he, I didn't do it, he was going to do it right. Why I was asleep. Okay. So, um, I took them to Rush Run Lake. Mm-hmm. The two older kids had gotten out, which is... James was still in the back seat, mm-hmm. acting like he was asleep, and he wasn't. Right. I took him out, set him on the ground, he stood up, mm-hmm. and he kept trying to get back in the van, because the door slide, and he just pulled the door handle mm-hmm. to get in. Um, he kept trying to get back in the van, the doors automatically lock. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I didn't see, I know he had the handle, right. trying to get back in, because mm-hmm. he kept saying, Mommy, you don't want to be here. Right. Basically, he was a baby, he's, he's scared. Right. Um, no, I did not want to take him nowhere, mm-hmm. but he was insisting nonstop. When you say he was insisting nonstop, we're talking about James Hamilton. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, he has a kid of his own, so I don't understand how he's not mentally stabilized for a kid. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, <clears throat> I told them to go towards the bathroom, so I didn't run them over, none of that. Right. So I knew where they were at, mm-hmm. and I knew they were safe. Well, James, well, the elder two went towards the bathroom like I asked, the older two. Mm-hmm. James refused to because he went back in the van because he was scared. Mm-hmm. And he didn't want to be there. Right. He had a door handle and I took off, mm-hmm. not realizing that he had the handle. Right. And I didn't take off for I showed him on this on the map. Mm-hmm. Um I didn't get to all the way out to the main road. Mm-hmm. Um but I had 
dragged him. I heard a little noise. I didn't hear a thump or anything like I ran him over. Did you feel a bump? No. Mm -hmm. Um, But what I'm thinking is I dragged him and then eventually I didn't run him over because I didn't hear a thump or like the van lifted up on one side because I ran over animals that's already dead in the road so I know what it feels like. So... I didn't feel like, I didn't see that, feel that when I was driving or anything. So eventually he had to let off, let go of the handle. Mm-hmm. And my daughter said that I didn't run him over. Because I asked her, did y'all see me run him over? She said, I seen what you was doing, mom, you didn't run him over. Right. And he had that door handle. We not realizing that I accidentally drove him. And he, she said, I only drove him for, well, she thought it was only a few minutes because she doesn't know. She said, I drove him for a few minutes and he let go. Like he couldn't basically hold on. Probably because I was trying to hurry up and get out of there because that's what he told me to do. Because I don't know nothing about driving. He's more experienced than I am. I'm basically a new driver. I just started driving recently. How recently? Uh, well, I, only, I have my ID, so my driver, actual driver's license. I went to take the driver's test mm-hmm. and then uh, pass my driver's test and got my license. So you do have your license? Yes. Okay. And you were able to pass the test? How many times did you check the test? Um, I just took it one time that day. So you passed it the first time? Well, the, they, the written they, test? they made me the driver part. Mm-hmm. So they the made me... Part? Um, I passed the red part, I believe. Okay. Um, they made me try it twice. I got it wrong. Well, they did it three times. Mm-hmm. I got it wrong twice, and then last time I got it right, because they said you only get three tries. And that's the driving part? Yes. Okay. And I got it right the third time. Good job. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But it's the first time ever I had my license. How long ago was that? Um... What was that, the end of last year? The, no, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, because we were in a um, hotel, it was in December. And you never had a driver's license before that? No, never. So you've been driving for six months? Yeah. About? About six months, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we can check that for sure on that. Yeah, so, so you drove away, then what happened? Um, I went, I pulled out, went to the left, mm-hmm. went all the way to where there was two parts that went like this. Mm-hmm. You can either go this way or this way. There was an arrow, mm-hmm. a yellow and black arrow sign. I don't know, it was supposed to right there in front of me. Okay. I could see it with my headlights. Mm-hmm. I went there. I stopped there. I got that bar, turned back around, and went back. Okay, no way. Um, I got almost to the where I had dropped them off at, mm-hmm. and my two older kids were maybe a quarter mile from the the entrance of where I put them at. So they had walked about a quarter mile when you left? Yes. After you left. Okay. But when I had left, they were back by the right. bathroom. Right. Um, and I asked them where James was. Because mm-hmm. I didn't realize that I heard him. Right. Or drove him. Mm-hmm. So I asked them, where's your brother at? I don't know. He's back there and laying down. I can't get him up. Mm-hmm. So I went back to see what happened. Mm-hmm. Well, um, my daughter said he was breathing heavy. Because mm-hmm. uh, I asked her what she said. She she couldn't get him up. I asked, asked her if she, he was breathing. And she said, yeah, he was breathing kind of heavy. He took like two or three deep breaths. Yeah. And after that, she said yeah, she couldn't get him to wake up nothing. So therefore... He was dead when I, that's how I got told. He was no longer breathing when you got there. Yeah. Okay. And what happened? Um, I 
well, before I got to James, I made the other two get back in the van. Uh-huh. Then I went and got James mm-hmm. and put James, lay, I laid him in the floor of the van mm-hmm. in between the two front seats and the back seat. Mm-hmm. Took him home mm-hmm. to 507 Crawford. Mm-hmm. Let the, got the kids out, carried James into the house. Mm-hmm. James Hamilton already had the door wide open, mm-hmm. so I didn't have to pull out a key or anything to get in. So did you call him between... I, oh, yeah, I called him. I called him. Okay. Well, I had texted him. Texted him. And said, I got rid of him. Mm-hmm. And... Um, he called me because I said I might have accidentally hurt James from I, the kids because I. This is before you went back to pick up the kids. Yeah. Already texted him, and you said you might have accidentally hurt James. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he had called me, mm-hmm. and he told me to go back and get them, that he would do something with them when I got back, since I don't know how to do anything right. Okay. So you you texted him and said, you got rid of him, you might have hurt James. Then he calls you and you talk to him. Yes. And during this conversation, he says what? He says, go back and get them. Mm-hmm. I will take care of them. I will get rid of them when you bring them back. And then what happened? Um, so that's when I went back. Yeah, when he said, I'll get rid of them. Three children. He's going to get rid of all three of them. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then what happened? So I went back, so that's when I turned around, mm-hmm. went back to get the children. Mm-hmm. The two was coming out. They were like a quarter mile away from the, um, where I had left them. Mm-hmm. I went back and I seen, I asked them, the two kids where Jay's was. And I went back, well, I asked him if he was okay, breathing, all that. So I went back and got James. He was laying on the ground. He was, um, it looked like he, he was bleeding right here. Because mm-hmm. it was like, there was blood circling like this and like this. Right. And my daughter said he had hit the ground. Now, just a question, because this is 3 a.m. in the morning? Um, now? Yeah. Are there any lights there? Are there parking lot lights? Um, no, there were there was no lights. I remember seeing a shadow of an animal. Because mm-hmm. I, I wondered how your daughter could see exactly what happened. My headlights. Because your headlights? Yes. And you think it illuminated enough where she could clearly see what was going on? Okay, so... Well, I'm sure they said they were going to question to ask, talk to the kids, too, so... All right. So, you get back home, and uh, you had James laying on the floor. He carried James into the house. Where did you put him? I laid him... Mm-hmm. The, the first room when we walk in the door, mm-hmm. I laid him on the floor. The two children wasn't crying or anything. They were more shook up than anything. Yeah. So they just went and grabbed their toys out the closet mm-hmm. and sat down and was watching TV and playing with the toys. James Hamilton took James upstairs mm-hmm. to his bedroom, laid him in front of the side window, mm-hmm. and if you go upstairs, there's a straight ahead mm-hmm. as soon as you go off the steps. Mm-hmm. Laid up by the side window. I told him we need to tell somebody, not just let them lay there. Mm-hmm. Because I watched the Law and Order shows and all of that, and I knew it wasn't right just to uh, leave them laying up there. Well, he had took them up there. He said we had. Two to three days to get rid of the body. Because uh-huh. I I know nothing about dead people, bodies, none of that. 
Um, so he went upstairs. We had a heat rolling because we were cold. Right. Uh, and the children kept saying they were freezing. So we turned on the heat. He went up there and said he, well, this is what he told me. He went up there and walked off the heat. Try to keep it cool in the room yes. he was in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, what is it today, Monday? Yes. Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, mm-hmm. well, Saturday night, well, we went to sleep mm-hmm. at 10-ish. Mm-hmm. Kids are already asleep at nine ish. Mm-hmm. We went to sleep. He woke me up at one. Mm-hmm. Told me we need to have this done by two thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. Well, we'd be out of here by two thirty in the morning. Yeah. Um. So we took and drove to any from to Indiana, Kentucky. White is it White River Lake River? Like, you got to tell me. I can't put words in your mouth on that. So you just describe if you don't know. Well, it said Cincinnati. Can you talk about where the detective took you yesterday? Yeah. Okay, I know where that is. Then it, it is. Uh, yeah, two seventy five uh, from Indiana to Kentucky, White Water area. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I know it said White. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Right. But we took them there. Mm-hmm. We had to do it twice. Like, we went to do it the first time. Mm-hmm. There was, he said there was too much traffic. We were going to get in trouble. Right. So, he mm-hmm. took that next exit, which is Pittsburgh, I think. Mm-hmm. We took that exit, got back on mm-hmm. the same highway, but going back down. We went to that next exit back down. Okay. Now, I know from talking to detectives, I think you've skipped over something. And that is, you, he woke you up and said, we have to have this done by 2.30. When he, you, he woke you up, what did you guys do? Um, I woke up and he told me to start getting dressed. Right. Because I was still trying to mm-hmm. wake up, function, right? <clears throat> and he told me to start getting, well, I went to sleep because I was so tired. I went to sleep with still... Uh, the sweatpants on that I told them I had on, mm-hmm. and the sh- pink shirt. Mm-hmm. So I went to sleep mm-hmm. with the same clothes on because right. I was so tired. I just wanted to go to bed. Mm-hmm. So he told me to get socks, shoes, and a thin jacket on or something because it was raining. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did that. He went back upstairs and got. He went upstairs and got James. He carried James downstairs. He went up there and got him carried it down. Okay. I opened the... We both went out the door at the same time, but I had opened the door first. Mm-hmm. So he told me to open the door. We both went out at the same time. We need to go to... Um, when you go on our walkway, the mm-hmm. front... The sidewalk right there. <clears throat> Stand there and look around. See if I see any headlights or anybody okay. out. And kind of glance around next door and see if there's any lights on or anything like that. Right. And he told me just to wave when it was okay. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did and uh, opened the passenger side back door. Okay. Uh, so that's what I did. He laid James in there. Mm-hmm. And he said he already has a string. Well, the rope, not string. Right. The rope and the center box. Well, it was a brick. Well, it was like a big walk like this. It didn't have holes in it. He made holes in it. Okay. If it makes any sense. So it's like a paver? Is it square? Yeah. They had to put holes in it? Yes. And yeah. it, um, it was something like a center walk, mm-hmm. but it, he had to make his own holes. Okay. And he had got that. He said he had got that from a neighbor's house over a fence. From over a fence. So is it, is, it, is it a tall? It was like this long. How thick was it? And it was like this. Okay. And he had laid. We had to stop the first time. How did he put a hose in? Do you know? Uh, I don't know if he did it on his own. Did he have to use a drill? I, well, you don't know. I have no idea. Okay. But I know he said he had to put holes in it. Okay. And then he told me there, he got the holes in it now. 
Um, he had see, I'm losing track. Where was that? Okay, he, he, you made sure the coast was clear. Mm -hmm. We waved him out to the van. And I opened the van door. Open the van door. We took off. We went straight down to Logan Street. Mm -hmm. we went left on Logan. Mm -hmm. Went straight down to the interpass. We went this way. Once he made sure the tracker was clear mm -hmm. to hit the um, Cincinnati when, exit. When were the ropes and the cinder block attached to James? That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, because he's the one that did that, I didn't do that. He, um, went to, you know, Catering Hospital right here, it says Dayton, Cincinnati, before the highway. Or the... They're still in Middletown, right? Yes. Yes. We went to, it was that Cincinnati. We went that, um, we took that, I don't know what it's called. Were you on I-75? Yeah, we took Cincinnati. I know that for a fact. Okay. We took Cincinnati, and he went straight to Moreau. Indiana, mm -hmm. and then from Indiana, he went to, it said, Cincinnati, Kentucky Bypass. He took the Kentucky Bypass. Mm -hmm. And then, um, once we got to the, and then the bridge, mm -hmm. the bridge, we tried the first time. Oh, no, actually, before that, went back, before that, he had stopped, um, he stopped at once, I don't know how far it was, mm -hmm. to, and he turned off the headlights, everything, like he shut the whole van down. He went back there, I was just sitting in the front seat, because I don't know nothing about getting rid of bodies, none of that. Right. He had put the center block, or he made the center block, basically, put right. that on James's chest, from, it was like from here to, like, part of his leg. Uh -huh. Well, it wasn't all the way up on his chest. It was like where his boobs were. Right. Um, and he had this rope that he got for work use mm -hmm. and was using it to wrap, I'm guessing wrap the kid, the James and the brick, the center blocks right. to hold tack. Because mm -hmm. I can't tie worth the crap. Yeah. And I wouldn't have done it anyway because I don't know how to do none of that. Right. Um, and once again, I didn't want to just get rid of the body. I wanted to call somebody. Right. I wanted to do what I thought was best. Mm -hmm. And he kept on insisting to get rid of the body because he had bruises from James punching him everywhere. Oh, okay. If, basically, if he didn't have the bruises on him and he didn't want, he didn't want to go to jail for the bruises or be in trouble for the bruises on the kid, I would have called and reported it right then and there when it happened. Mm -hmm. But he insisted on not reporting it because he had bruises. All right. Okay. That I did not do. Okay. Because like I said, I'd rather make them stand in the corner than put my hands on. Alright. So... James wraps the, the 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 cinder block around James's yeah. chest body, and then what happens? Um, well, it took him a minute to get it all however he had it needed to be done. Mm -hmm. So after that, he got back in the driver's seat, mm -hmm. took off, went. Went to go head towards the bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, he was looking around, looking. I'm so sorry, my turn is off. This should be off. Oh, okay, it's off now. Anyways, he went um, to. We was going to do it the first time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to help him to get rid of the body or anything, but he said, "You have to help me." Right. Because it was, he was, the weight from him died dead, and the brick, he couldn't do it on his own. He tried anything. James. Okay. I don't know my ways about nothing, so. Right. He said it wasn't advised for me to drive anywhere, and I was like, I don't know where I'm doing, what I was doing, nothing, so. Hmm. Um, he drove a van, 
even after he stopped to wrap him up. And he he was driving the van the whole van the whole time, mm -hmm. even to go back home. Okay. Um, we had stopped to wrap the body up. Mm -hmm. Well, he had we stopped. He wrapped the body up. I didn't wrap it up. Right. I was um, waiting to, for him to get done. Um, you told me to try to duck down. I guess so nobody would see a shadow in the car or something from the headlights. Mm -hmm. Um, told me to duck down to make it seem like there's nobody in here. The car is abandoned. So that's what I've done. And we went to go ahead up to the bridge the first time. Mm -hmm. Well, he noticed there's cars coming mm -hmm. at us. Mm -hmm. So we, um, he said we had no choice but to go keep going and go to the next exit. Mm -hmm. Got off on that exit, went back around, mm -hmm. got back on that highway, that same highway, mm -hmm. on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. Then got off on the next exit, um, going back down. I don't know what that next exit is. Okay. But you drove them there. Yeah. You went with the detective. Yeah. So they know. Right. I drove them. Well, I didn't drive them. Right. Um, we went to that next exit. We went back. We went, got off that next exit, went back on to get back on to, I guess, highway would it be? Yeah. Highway mm -hmm. to go back to the bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, he had stopped, like, because I took show the bridge don't have no worries. I'm just pulled over off to the side. Yeah, it's kind of skinny. In the yeah, and he had stopped, I mean, like, halfway Halfway down the road before the bridge, mm -hmm. where it started cutting off, to wait till traffic was clear, he turned off the headlights. Same thing again. Right. Um, waited for traffic to be clear, mm -hmm. and took off flying to the middle of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Stopped to the middle of the bridge. Told me to get out, mm -hmm. hurry up, and open the back. Passenger side door, mm -hmm. and I was to grab his feet and help him toss right. the child over. Mm -hmm. And he grabbed the top half, right. and he was in the driver's seat, got crawl in between the well, walk in between the two feet mm -hmm. up front, grabbed his head, and he had got out too, to because we were standing like this basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To toss him over, and I heard when I we tossed him over. I heard our uh, the splat because of the brick being heavy. Right. So you had the feet, and he had the head, and you guys just tossed him like that. Yeah. Okay. Then what happened? Um, we went home. Then what happened? Um, it was around almost five o'clock. Mm -hmm. In the morning, the time we got back home, right. um, the kids were still asleep. Mm -hmm. When we got back, we sat there a while. I went to sleep. I couldn't stay up any longer because I still had my meds in me. I was still ready to go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. I even was kind of falling asleep, going to do all this. Mm -hmm. um, I went back to sleep. He woke me up at 8 o'clock and said, we got to go report this mm -hmm. as a missing child. Okay. So then we came here. Well, he waited an hour to make y'all think that we went looking for him for an hour. Okay. So in between that hour of waiting, we went to the garage mm -hmm. that I showed them. Right. He put... Um, the rope, the leftover rope, and uh, I don't know the hard. Is it a hard drive he put in the recording camera thing? Yeah. He took the. I mean, I forgot to mention that he had the cameras. Mm -hmm. He had a recording thing, but it doesn't have audio. Right. Well, that's what he told me. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know nothing about those cameras. Most of your security cameras don't have audio. 
Um, he took the hard drive out. Mm-hmm. It was a skinny, like an iPod. Have you ever seen an iPod? Mm-hmm. He t- took the um, hard drive out, put it back in the original box in plastic and all. Mm-hmm. It was a blue and white box. Mm-hmm. He had put those boxes, because there's two of them. One he hasn't used, and the other one has the footage. What did he do with these hard drives? Hard drive. In the garage. They're in the garage right yes. now? Yes. Okay. I don't know exactly where at, but I see him go in the garage with it. I don't know if he went out the back door. So this was the hard drive. And it was this before you came down here and reported him missing? Yes. Okay. So this goes up here. So he took the hard drive out of your security camera. Well, his security camera is not mine. It's his security camera. Okay. I have no idea about none of that security stuff. Where are the cameras? Um, there's one on the front, mm-hmm. two on the side, one like this, mm-hmm. and one on the back. Okay. Do they record all the time? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. Um, I think am I missing anything? Or you? No, I, I, I want to know. Because I'm trying to think of questions that other people will have. Because we don't want people to speculate. Because what happens when people speculate, they, they think they're worst. But we, we just want the truth to be known. The daughter you had when you were raped, mm-hmm. her name's mm-hmm. Is right? You gave her for adoption. The first question anybody's going to ask, in my mind, is if these kids are too much for your household to handle, why didn't you just put them up for adoption like you did? I didn't want to. Why not? Because I knew I was going to be able to take care of them, care for them, make sure they went to the doctors, school, everything. But you you took them out to rush run to leave them. Because that's what I was told to do, or they, he was doing it himself. And if he did it himself, what was he going to do to him? Now, when you're driving to rush run, and you're thinking, I'm going to get rid of these kids. Surely you know if you just drop them off, they're old enough to talk and say who they are and where they belong, that they're going in up right back at your house. That's what I told them. So, they still you, insist on me getting rid of them somewhere. So if you're going to get rid of them, that really doesn't get rid of them. That just, that just puts them in where they're not supposed to be at. Yeah, and, and you're potentially going to be in trouble for that, for abandoning these kids at Rush Run. So that's not really getting rid of them. What was your plan to do at Rush Run when you got there? What 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 were you going to do? Just drop them off, and I told them to stay in the bathroom so they wouldn't get hurt. Then what was going to happen? In your mind... I was just going to go back home. But these kids weren't just going to disappear. Well, they said I was going to abandon them. Okay. So and I didn't want to do that. But they were, they know where they live and everything. They, they don't know where I, we live at, but they do know my name. All right. Basically, that's it. They know my name. They know their name. Okay, so... How was this going to solve that problem? Because they were going to end up back at your house. How, how was dropping them off at Rush Run solving a problem? So he didn't have to deal with them? Yeah, but they were going to end up back there. Because somebody was going to find them and bring them home. Yeah, but that's, I took them there so he didn't have to deal with Because he said to take them smart so he can, because he's tired of dealing with them and me not disciplining them. Mm-hmm. In your mind, what was going to happen to Rush Run when you got there? In my mind, I was just going to drop them off and leave. Okay, because I'm going to ask you, in a paragraph, is everything you, did you purposely omit any information in your statement? Were you going to kill them once you got to Rush Run? No, I was not. Because you, uh, you were told you were in the wrong area. Right? When you show yeah. up at the restaurant, he, he tells you you're, you're not the right place. We had went there before to let 
the children use the bathroom. So I was confused because there was cars and stuff. It was, you was going back farther. Mm -hmm. And I was confused because I had never been there. Mm -hmm. So, and then he had told me to take them to Rush Run Lake, where I remember I was at. Why did it matter that you got to the lake? Were you going to drown them in the lake? No. Because, you know, there had been a case a couple of years ago where a lady and actually, children. And actually, I was going to take them there, there, leave them there, and then when he was to go to work, I was going to go back to get them. So your intention was n was not to go to Rush Run and kill them? No. But his intentions, I believe, was if I didn't get rid of them, he was going to. Was he going to kill him if he got rid of him? He's told him several times that he wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. He couldn't stand him. Do you think he thought you were going to kill him? What did he think you were going to do to Rush Road? He didn't think I was going to do any of it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he told me. He didn't think I was going to take them and drop them off. He thought I was just going to take them, show them, and come back. Literally, I don't have killed anybody in my blood. I've never killed somebody in my life. He's killed, he said he's killed several people and got away with it. Mm -hmm. But your first child, um, when you got rid of her, you did it the right way. You put her up for adoption, the family took her in, and hopefully she's doing well. But these kids, you're doing it different. To get rid of them, you're, you're abandoning well, them. Well, I have tried them. to rush, rush. get. Well, recently when we was in the hotel, mm -hmm. he had said the same, done the same issue. Like you need to get rid of these kids or do something with them. I just sat there, yeah, ignored him. Right. And he was like, either you get rid of them, I get rid of them. I go to jail. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I've been to jail. I know how to, how it works. Sure. I'm ready to rest my neck or be dead. Exact words he said. Mm -hmm. This is when you were living in the motel. Mm -hmm. okay. And he's been saying it ever since. Okay. So why didn't you just put these kids up for adoption or put them in foster care or have the family member take them? Since he's been saying that for a year now? Is it how no, it was, it was a couple, couple months. months. He's been saying this for a couple months. Yeah. How long have you been living on Crawford Street? We just moved in there February. Okay. So, if you're going to get rid of these kids, I have, why not do it a different way? I was going to take them to, I was told that you can take them to the fire station, the mm -hmm. local fire station, and drop them off. They will be safe there. That would have been a good plan. Yeah. But when I had called around, they told me I couldn't do that. That's still abandoning my children. Well, it would have been preferable than taking them to the middle of nowhere to drop them off. Uh, it would have been a crack of hell you. But you chose to do it this way. Yeah, that's because they told me I couldn't just take them there and drop them off. Who told you that? Um, he did. Because I looked it up on the website where can you take your children where they will be safe and you will not get in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. And it says the fire, your local fire station. So why didn't you do it that way? Because I listened to what you said, you couldn't do it. But online it said you could. Right. Am I making any sense here? Yeah, but what I, I want to get over this hump because I don't know if you see it or not, but I do. And it's just a hump I need to get over. So you decided not to because of what he said, drop him off the firehouse, which would have been a good choice. And you decided to take him to a restaurant. But they still would have turned out they're old enough to know your name and they would have ended up home. So in my mind, in my thinking, the only way that would have worked is if when you left there, they were dead, so they couldn't make their way back home. Well, I knew they were going to make their way back home because I wasn't going to do nothing to them. It 
why was it important for you to be in the right place? You had to be at Rush Run Lake. So any place but a but but any place would have been good. But he he was telling you you were in the wrong place. Why was it important for you to be in the right place? So I remember the where they were, so I could go back to get them. But when you dropped them off, you really didn't have any intention of going back to get them. You didn't change your mind until after you got to the entrance or the exit. Well, before I made them get out. Right. I sat there and was trying to, like, should I do this, should I not? Right. So I listened to him, so I listened to myself. Right. And, and in that moment, you decided to listen to him and leave him. Yes. But then when you got to the exit, you went back. But when you originally dropped him off, you had no intention of going back to get them. But you changed your mind. Yeah. When you got, okay. But I was not intentionally taking them there to kill them anything. All right. I was taking them there, dropping them off. I knew eventually they were going to come back to me and I was going to get in trouble for abandoning them. Well, I was just abandoning them at the firehouse then. If he, if he convinced you you're going to be in trouble for that. He didn't tell me any of that thing. He just told me I was going to, well, after all of this over, he said I was going to jail for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. When it was all over? Why do you say that? Because surely he thought this plane would work, dumping in the river and reporting you missing. All right. So, you, your statement is that, uh, I understand when James, for, for two months that you've been living at the motel, has been wanting you to get rid of the kids. And if you don't get rid of them, he's going to. So, you decide to take, take in the restaurant and get rid of them. But in your mind, getting rid of them means what? Just dropping them off. Just dropping them off. Yeah. And but you understand that's really not getting rid of them. Not permanently, anyway. They're going to make their way back home. I knew they would make their way back home. Okay. Um, so, when you dropped them off, uh, James wouldn't get out of the vehicle because he was pretending like he was sleeping. Because he didn't want to. Right. So, you pick him up. Am I okay to drink wine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You set him down. He wants to get back in the van. He says, Mom, I don't want to be here. Is that right? Yeah. And he's holding on to the door. You take off. He falls to the ground. Hits his head when he falls. You get to the exit of the park. Change your mind. Go back. The kids have already walked a quarter mile towards you as they're walking towards the entrance. Mm-hmm. You pick them up, say, where's James? James is heavy breathing. Uh, you go back for James. He's not breathing. He's clearly dead. Mm-hmm. You put him in the uh, vehicles. You uh, drive home. And, uh, oh, you, you first, before you turned around and went back, you texted him and said that you got rid of the kid. Mm-hmm. But then after you tuck in, you said that James was hurt. James yeah, might be hurt. All right. But then after you texted him, you changed your mind, turned around, went back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oh, no, he told you twice. Go back and get the kids. Because mm-hmm. he said, I don't know what the, I'm doing. I don't know how to do nothing right. So you didn't change your mind. He told you to go back. Yeah. Okay, so you were going to leave him, but he told you to go back because you can't do it right. All right. Um, And I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm guessing in his eyes, he was hoping that I was just going to get real, kill him, all that. But I did not. Had you guys talked about it in yeah. the house before you took him to the restaurant? No. Well, well, clearly you did because he said you were in the wrong place, so he knew where you were planning on taking him. No, he told me just to take him to the restaurant. And do what with him? 
What did he want you to do to them? Just take them there. But you can't just take them there. you got to do something. What did he think you were going to do at Rush Road? I have no idea because I wasn't. We talked about it enough that he knew you needed to go to the water. Okay. Before, it, this helps with the story. Yeah. Way before this, mm-hmm. he had bought the rope and all that. He had tied up all three of my children, mm-hmm. stuck <laughs> dirty <laughs> underwears in their mouth, uh-huh. wrapped, tied their, their mouth up too. With the underwear and who's dirty underwear? The children's. Mm-hmm. And put them upstairs in the closet. Mm-hmm. I told him he doesn't need to do that. Leave them, uh, leave them alone. Right. Well, he still insisted on, I'm done with these kids basically trying to have a good if they kill them. Mm-hmm. Is that what you do when you, they're going to die eventually once you rack them well, tie them up to where they can't move and breathe, right? Mm-hmm. Did you cover their noses up too? Um, no. Mm-hmm. Just put the their, the children's own underwear in mm-hmm. their mouth mm-hmm. and tied a rope to try to help keep the, I'm guessing, the underwear in their mouth. Right. And he had to come upstairs mm-hmm. and put them in the closet and the daughter's room. Mm-hmm. Well, I wanted to go back up there to take a look, um, take the roof off and all that. Mm-hmm. He told me if I was to go up there and take the rope off of them, he was leaving and taking all of them and getting rid of them. Mm-hmm. How long were they up there? Um, well, he had kept going up there because James, the little boy, mm-hmm. kept taking the rope off his, um, somehow taking the rope off his mouth mm-hmm. and taking the, um, thing, the underwear out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. And, um, kept moving around, yelling, Mom, 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 please help me. Come, I gotta use the bathroom. Well, I went to go upstairs. He jumped up and went up there. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what he did because I didn't go upstairs. Did you hear any ruckus or anything? I heard thumping, mm-hmm. like a lot of, like, <laughs> on the floor. Is that when James, the little boy, got all the bruises on him? Probably. Then when he had went upstairs. How, how long before? Friday that take place where he tied up all three kids and put them in the closet. Um, well, I said, I'm trying to help, trying to give you the right, I wouldn't get it. I said James was, I did all this Friday into Saturday morning, right? right. So it was Friday night then. The, the same? Yes. Okay. It happened to be right before. Mm-hmm. What we had was arguing, and then he got mad because I wasn't doing nothing, basically. Right. I was just sitting there ignoring him, acting, letting the children basically stand in front of him, whatever they wanted. He had went and grabbed some rope mm-hmm. that he had bought from the Walmart mm-hmm. and started tying them up. Is that why he bought the rope? Did you tie them up? I don't, I don't know. He told me it was for work. What do you do for a living? Electric. He's an electrician? Mm-hmm. So I don't know if he was maybe any junks here and there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if he was using the rope to hold the junk down. I don't know. Right. Um, but he had gotten the rope and it sat around for a little bit like he left it laying on the floor. I was going to go hide it, but he wouldn't even move, leave, nothing. How um, often did he work? He was out for the whole mo- uh, week from being sick. Okay. So he missed from, he didn't work since the last, the Friday before. Okay. If it's making any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, he 
and he was out that whole week. Right. So I had to deal with him the whole week. Mm-hmm. Well, I was also sick. I didn't want to deal with the children. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to be beating on the children. I wanted to just like, hey, you guys can't be doing that. You're in trouble. Now like, you can get in the corner. Right. Well, he insisted on not feeding them. I said they had to eat something mm-hmm. or they're going to die. I don't want my children to die. Mm-hmm. Well, he's like, you can only, I only advise you, I only want you to give them bread and bologna. And they are only allowed having water to drink. Um, even though before that, because remember I told you all of this started happening with getting rid of the kids when we was in the hotel. He had... So the house was in your name? Yes. What's your attraction to James? What was my what? Attraction to James. The my boyfriend. You were able to get a place all by yourself, right? But you moved James. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't even afford the hotels. Do you love James? I did until I seen how he was acting towards my children. When did you stop loving him? Um, I haven't, well, basically, once he starts telling me to get rid of the children, mm-hmm. is when every, my love for him basically started going down. Mm-hmm. I was trying to get me mm-hmm. and myself right. out of that predicament and mm-hmm. go stay with my sisters. Mm-hmm. But I had no, they wouldn't let me. So at that time, I didn't know where to go, what to do. Where did you call them? Um, I talked to my sister Lisa a lot right. about everything that goes on. Mm-hmm. Because I need somebody to tell, somebody to help me. Basically, well, I don't know, not help me, but because I, I mean, I wasn't going to get do nothing to those children, but. I wanted to tell somebody, so I had the, other, the understanding from someone that knew more of right to wrong. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know how none of the law works, none of that. Like I said, I've never been in trouble, ever. It's not really about the law, it's just about being a loving mother, you know, so... Yes, I didn't... So, you, you, when you're thinking about kids, like, I don't think about, well... Is it legal for me to do this to my children? I think more like, is it right for me to do this? Yeah. Well, I was talking to her about what was going on, why we were constantly arguing. And it was constantly because kids wasn't listening, I wasn't disciplined. Mm-hmm. And I told, I told him over and over, they're kids. What do you expect children to do? They're not going to listen. I mean, the only thing you can do is Make them stand in the corner. Mm-hmm. And I told him, he's like, well, you can spank them, mm-hmm. just don't leave a mark. And I looked at him, I rather not spank my children. I do not want to leave no marks on my children. Right. I rather just stand them in the corner because that don't leave marks. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. So... At the motel is when he started complaining about the kids. Mm-hmm. And the house that you got is in your name. How did you get that house? It's, well, I had, with the stimulus check, mm-hmm. I had saved up between that and my son has SSI. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, he has SSI because he's ADHD. Mm-hmm. He has a learning disability. Some of his words you cannot understand. Mm-hmm. So, like, you have to ask him several times of what he's saying. Right. You can't understand it. Well, I had applied for all three of them at this side because none of them, they had all okay. three had learning okay. disabilities. Okay. And I was told <laughs> by the doctor, mm-hmm. the ADHD doctor that prescribed the medication, like, because I told her I need it some type of health assistance, something besides food stamps, so I can pay for a movie for 
me and my children's roof over her head. Right. And she told me I can uh, get SSI for them. Okay. So that's what I was doing. I started the process with first, mm-hmm. and then after that I did the other two. Right. And I got approved. You went to the medical doctors that they have you do before you get approved for the SSI. Okay. I took them to the doctor. Mm-hmm. They did the testing, however they did it. I sat out in the waiting room. Mm-hmm. After they asked me what they had asked me, I sat out in the waiting room while they did whatever to examine to see if he had disability or not or stuff like that. <coughs> well, I had applied for the SSI. <coughs> did the appointments and all that. Got approved not too long ago for it. Mm-hmm. While they owed me still back pay. Mm-hmm. But with him working, he was paying the motel and whatever else. Okay. I had the money. I was saving the money from the SSI mm-hmm. to get me and my children my own, our own place. Right. And basically, I was trying to get away from him, but he just said that I was going to, that he was going to help me. Right pay the bills. Mm-hmm. So that's my attention what I thought he was just going to do, was right. help me pay the bills, like a roommate type ordeal. You were romantically involved? We, were, we still were romantically involved. Right. But I was trying to like, give each other a break, if you get what I'm saying, mm-hmm. to see maybe if that would help our relationship better. So I was saving up money to get us, me and my children, a place to live between the SSI and the stimulus pay right. that I had got. So I was saving up that money to get us our own place and to make sure we have enough for the rent and maybe half of the deposit mm-hmm. and um, to get the water and the electric on. Well, the electric is on in his name because I couldn't... He wouldn't allow me to get in my name because he didn't want me to pay the 175 for the winter rule, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just going to put everything in my name. Right. He insisted on putting, he went ahead of me and put it in his name. Mm-hmm. I was going to put it in my name. But he beat you to it. Yes. Right. So that way if I did tell him to get out, everything would be in my name. I wouldn't have to right. worry did about it. Did you ever tell him to get out? No. I eventually, he ruined it once he said, I'm putting the uh, electric in my name. I wanted to just go ahead and pay whatever I had to pay, plus the water and the rent and the deposit, and put it all in my name. Did you know back back electric bill? Yes. And I even called around to try to see if I needed help with getting the electric a little cheaper for me and they told me the lowest they can do to me right now was the hundred and seventy five for the rental rule program and to sign up for the to start payment arrangements. Alright, so is everything you've told me today true? Yes. When your intention was when you left in the restaurant when you were driving to Rush Run, mm-hmm. when you were driving there, you did not intend to kill anybody. No, I did not. And when you were driving away, you're, you felt in your mind that what would happen when you left these kids at the park? Mm-hmm. What, what did you think would happen? They might get hurt or... How would they get hurt? Well, he told me that somebody might end up kidnapping them. Mm-hmm. I was like, I hope not. Right. What did you think would happen to him at the park? I knew this later when I found their way back home where they would have seen somebody going by and stop him. Mm-hmm. What, what did you think would happen at that point? Can you explain more, Sasha? Oh, well, well, I'm trying to, because you had a plan, clearly had a plan, because you and James, the boyfriend, you guys talked about it. You knew where you were going to go. You were going to go to the area by the water. Well, when he wrapped, he tied them up or whatever it was. Right, he tied them up Friday. 
Oh, I forgot about that. How did they get untied? I untied them. Okay. I had told them to go to bed. Mm-hmm. Like, I was letting it all go and just sleep on it. Right. And he kept nagging at me. I could, He wouldn't let me go to bed. Mm-hmm. Even though after I had told the children to stay up there in the room and go to bed. Right. I will see them in the morning. Mm-hmm. He insisted on, no, you have to get rid of them. You can't go to bed until you get rid of them. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't want to get rid of them. Right. Why can't we just go to bed? Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm tired. It's late. I don't want to get rid of my children. Right. I was going to look at him and tell him, why don't you go somewhere? Mm-hmm. And he said, I don't have to. I pay the bills here. You told him that? And that was his response? And the only bill he paid the electric. Right. And then I started thinking, like, maybe I should have just called the cops. Mm-hmm. They probably would have made him leave, right? If it was from my name or a... Gosh, if we knew what he had done to the kids, tied him up and put him in there, we would have taken him to jail. That's domestic violence. Well, see, I don't know nothing about the law, mm-hmm. or I would have done that. Yeah. So, you get him up high, you tell him to go to bed, he won't let you get to go to sleep until you get rid of him. Yeah, they started, they started to go to bed. The diary told them, uh, lay out their bedding, lay down. Right. But I didn't go to sleep, because mm-hmm. I was literally getting ready to go, well, you know, I smoked cigarettes, I told you that. I was going to smoke a cigarette and then go to sleep. Right. Well, I smoked my cigarette and then he went back to started trying to argue with me. I kept trying my best to ignore him. Mm-hmm. And he kept saying, brick walls, brick walls. What does that mean? Basically talk to him Because okay. I wasn't acknowledging that he was speaking to me. Wow. I was trying to block him out, basically. Mm-hmm. And... Finally, I just couldn't deal with it. What I should have done was just got up, walked away, and went to bed. Mm-hmm. But I was still trying to enjoy my last cigarette before I went to sleep. Right. And he still wanted to sit there and constantly argue with me. I looked at him a couple times and told him, shut up. Because right. I didn't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he told me, make him shut up. I said, I'm not going to put my hands on you to make you shut up. You have the choice to either shut up or leave me alone or else. Right. <laughs> so, then at that time, um, will you help me when I'm still trying to wake up? And, where was I at? So, you told the kids to go to bed, you're having your last cigarette, you just want him to shut up, and your intention is to go to bed. Yes. Right. And just wake up the next morning and everything. Be fine. I still have my children. Mm-hmm. They're alive. They're okay. But he still kept insisting on You can't go to bed. You need to get real. So, I did what he asked, basically, instead of listening it to my gut. But you guys had talked about how you're going to get rid of him. Because he knew you were in no, the wrong No, he place. was going to get rid of him before that. On his own. What would you do? I, I don't know. He just said, I'm going to get rid of these fucking kids. Exact work. How did they get untied from the closet? I untied them. Okay, so they they were upstairs tied up. He had, he, he, little day. Like before mm-hmm. all this happened, mm-hmm. he was saying that he's going to get rid of the fucking kids because he's sick and tired of being alone. Mm-hmm. Excuse my French, but I'm telling you that right. words he said. Mm-hmm. I told him, no, you're not leaving my children alone. Okay. And. He said, you want to watch? I'm ready to rest my neck or go, uh, go be with my mom, which his mom is dead. Mm-hmm. And that's what he kept telling me over and over and over and over. Basically, it was every day of my life. Okay, so James ties up the kids in the closet. This is Friday. Yes. Friday night. Friday when night. All this. So, you untie the kids. Yes. See, that's probably what I should have told him, too, though. It would have helped out a lot more, huh? All right. So, if you untie the kids, you want to go to sleep. He won't let you sleep. Yes. He, uh, the kids were going to sleep upstairs. They were already in bed? Yes. And he's saying, no, you can't sleep until you get rid of the kids. Yeah. Now, I 
see why you said there's a gap or something missing. Yeah, yeah. Now I understand now I've ever listened to you saying. Mm -hmm. So he says, nope, you can't sleep until you get rid of these kids. And at some point you talked about it, how you're going to get rid of these kids, because he knew you were in the wrong place. Well, he told me I got the best place for them. Hmm. James, big James. Yes, not my son. Right. And that's when he told me rush run. I got the best place for you. What did he tell you to do? Um, he said just take them and drop them off. Just take them and drop them off? Because James wants, now James, big James, he wants to get rid of the kids for good. He doesn't want them back. I, I so don't know. he told you something besides just drop them off. No, that's exactly what he said. I wasn't trying. Uh -huh. What's he, well, actually, he, this is exactly what he said. Take them and drop them off. I don't care what you do with them. Okay. If that helps, too. Yeah. So he's trying to remove himself a little bit. Go there, take them and drop them off. I don't care what you do with them. And I looked at him and said, do you think I want to get rid of my, my own flesh and blood? Mm-hmm. And he just said, I don't care, get rid of them, do something with them. And I kept asking him over and over, why should I get rid of my children? At what point, and it might have been way before Friday, at what point did you discuss leaving them at the firehouse? And James, um, in James the James hotel. At the hotel. At the hotel, you'd already talked about getting rid of them at the hotel. No, he had told me I need to get rid of them. So I was thinking of the best mm -hmm. way that I knew they weren't going to get hurt or any of that. And you talked about drug most fires. Why, now, your first child was right? Yes. Why didn't you talk about just doing it as you did with because it was one and a half? Well, when I called two for one kids, I even called them myself. Who'd you call? Two for one kids. Two for one? The, for the ch children's, well, I don't know if it's called two for one kids in Middletown mm -hmm. or Dayton, because that's where I was at in Dayton. Mm -hmm. So I had called the Job and Family Services mm -hmm. and had asked to talk to someone to go about how to get rid of the children mm -hmm. because basically I was concerned about their safety. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want nothing to happen to them. Right. So they told me the only thing they could do was open up a case. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get rid of them or nothing. And he wasn't for it. Why wasn't he for that? I know he said, no, don't do it. I'm guessing because he thought I was going to be able to just uh, get rid of them, like vanish. Do you know who, you, how long ago was that that you talked to someone about? Getting rid of the children. I'm trying to remember the lady's name. She told me the lady's name. Mm -hmm. I had to wrote it down to the house. I can't go home and give you the paper. Um, there was a lady that I talked to. At family services. Yes. Yeah. And you talk to her about trying to put them in a foster home or somewhere safe that I knew was safe. And she said she couldn't help you, she could just open a case. Yes. Which would have you helping? She'd have to open a case. Well, that's case. what she said. It wasn't going to help me. She'd have to open a case first. And she told me if I wanted to, she was going to do that. But... He told me to call him and let him know what was said. Do you know what this family services organization is? Montgomery. Montgomery? It was Montgomery, Montgomery. yes. Okay. Where I got my food stamps from. Okay. And medical. Okay. So you had called them while you were in the motel with family services in Montgomery County. Yeah. What, what was your intention to do like you had done with? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
But that didn't work because they had to open a case. And yeah, James. Yeah. Big James didn't want you to do that. Yeah. Sorry. Does it make it a lot more sense now? Yeah, it is. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm just I'm trying to answer all the questions that somebody's going to ask later on. Okay. Because that's going to be one of the big questions. Why didn't you do what? Like it was. Well, when we was at the motel, kind of tried to do that. When we was at the motel, mm-hmm. he had. We were having problems. The oh, the and James was being hey, listening, all that. Mm-hmm. Well, I let him play, do what normal kids do. Right. And we're at a hotel, you know how kids like roam in the hallway. Oh, yeah, and, kids love that. Um, well, he had told me my daughter wasn't listening. She kept lying. Mm-hmm. She kept lying. And that's kind of intelligent. That's what I tried telling him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I said, all kids lie. Name one kid that does not lie. Right. They're supposed to be proud of when they tell their first lie. That means they're smart. Um, so, he's like, I'm tired of her lying. Mm-hmm. I said, well, all kids lie. Name one kid. Right. Find one kid and show me that kid that doesn't lie. Because mm-hmm. I knew right from there. Right. But as a result, we stop lying because we realize there's consequences of that. Right. But kids, kids don't. And eventually later on down the line, when they get on my age, they'll mm-hmm. learn. All right. Okay. But anyway, back to the hotel situation. All right. Wasn't listening. I just told him to get in the corner to basically let her know, like, hey, you can't be lying. Right. Well, that's when he started insisting on getting rid of her. Oh, my gosh. So I was calling around mm-hmm. to find a safe place for her to go. And she kept, um, basically she kept, he told me she was being unruly, not following our rules as being unruly is what he said. Mm-hmm. And I kept trying to ask him, like, how is that unruly? Kids are kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, I don't know how none of this stuff works, but, excuse me. But anyway, um, he wanted me to get rid of her first because she wasn't listening and the other two was. How do you want you to get rid of her? Basically the same thing he told me before. Get rid of them, drop them off somewhere. I don't care what you do with them. Me, thinking as a mother, right. was taking the safest place mm-hmm. to take them. And either knock them out or get myself out of the situation I was in. Right. If that's making a lot of sense to you, because it's making a lot of sense to me. Because, as I said, I didn't want to harm my children. And Mm -hmm. as you can tell, of me telling you, I was trying to get rid of her the safest way. And then, once they told me I had opened the case, Mm -hmm. that just made me tell me, and then listening to what he said, Mm -hmm. and her saying it wasn't going to help my situation. What I should have done was asked her, what can I do for me and my children that don't feel safe? Mm-hmm. And she probably would have gave me a list of places I probably could have went. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of shelters, women's shelters for but people there. You did abusive relationship. Now, when he tied them up Friday. He said even for abusive relationships. In, in, in abusive situations. Like what I've been going through? Where the kids are being abused. Yeah, my thing was, if he was abusing the kids, wouldn't I be next eventually? You'd think an abusive person is an abusive person. But he hadn't gotten around to abusing you yet. His previous relationship mm-hmm. was his wife. Mm-hmm. They had a daughter. Right. Well, she had a daughter. He was raising her since she was in diapers. Mm-hmm. Well, in between all that, he was in jail before that. For I don't know what, but right. he had said he was in jail before that. Mm-hmm. Well, he had got released when... Um, in 2007, mm-hmm. and um, when all the fighting and all that happened, we were living with them. Me and James's dad, right. which I don't know if they told you Lewis Hutchison. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. If they did, I forgot. Well, his, they told me not to tell him. Mm-hmm. Well, then you got to get You 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 gave James's dad. For some reason, James wanted that to be a secret. Well, he wanted to be. I was like, why can't I just tell him who his, his dad is? Mm-hmm. 
Do you, do you want to change that a little bit? We were back and forth. We were homeless. Right. So we were going from family to family, basically jumping around, right. trying to find the safest spot for us and our children. Right. Well, he had real bad seizures, mm-hmm. Lewis. Mm-hmm. And he refused for a while to not take his medicine. Mm-hmm. Well, I had to sit down with him and have a talk. Like, if you want to be around for your son's life and the other two that you raised as your own, then won't you have to, don't you think you should take your medicine to be around for them? Right. And he was like, yeah, sure, you make sense. I'm going to, and he stopped taking it back. Mm-hmm. So, because it was not him taking them, his seizures was getting worse or worse or worse. Or because they said it was caused from stress and all that. But um, they had got an argument previously before that. Me and Big Lewis, James and his dad. Hmm? Big James and his dad got an argument? No. Still, his wife. Oh, okay. They had got an argument mm-hmm. about the same ordeal that I'm going through right now right. with me and my children. Mm-hmm. They were going through the same ordeal with their one children, which is named Sarah, mm-hmm. and he was beating the out the mom. James I was that? No. James Hamilton was beating the shit out of his wife. Oh, okay. If it's making sense. All right. Me and Lewis mm-hmm. wanted to call the cops. Well, he's a convicted felon. Mm-hmm. He had a gun. And he was going to blow all of us exactly what he said. I'm going to blow you all away mm-hmm. if you call the cops. Well, we was going to call the cops because we were all stuck in this one room right. and didn't want to come out because he had his gun flopping around. We didn't know what was going to happen. So we wanted to stay in that room because they were towards the back of the house. So we wanted to kind of stay away from the situation, not let our kids see people doing this with guns and beating crap out of people. Right. So we try to stay away from it. Well, we kept getting up. Me and James Hamilton kept getting accused of having sex with each other, which we did not mm-hmm. until after they kept saying we did. And we moved out and separated. He separated from his wife and I separated from James's dad that I had been with off and on for my whole life. Was James was dad your boyfriend? When I was living with Yes, when I was living with James Hamilton and his wife and his daughter. Okay. Um, I know you're probably confused like you're telling me your whole life story. Yeah. <laughs> question about something. I'll think of it again. <laughs> well, when you think of it, just... Because there's, there's a lot like, of... Oh, I got that question there's back. There's a lot of information you're giving me. Well, I don't know who his name was. The detective that I... Detective Hoover? Yes. He told me any information will help my situation. Mm-hmm. And tell the truth about the whole situation. Right. So, he and he came in here before you came in here and told me to tell you everything, the whole situation mm-hmm. of how it all started, which I left that out. So now I'm telling you the whole entire story. Mm-hmm. So, I know you probably are Big James is James Hudson. No. No, James. Big James, James Hamilton. Hamilton. James Hamilton's dad is, what's his name? James Hamilton. You mean my son, James? No, 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 your boyfriend. You're confusing me. Okay. I don't know who James Big Hamilton's dad is. James, my son James is, is named, uh, my son's father's name is Lewis. Oh, so we're talking about Lewis. So your son's we last, were staying your son's last name is Hutchison. Hutchison. That's probably where you got. Yeah, yeah I think it's too many changes. I'm <laughs> trying to remember. 
Okay. James Hutchinson, the six-year-old, his dad is Lewis, L-E-W-I-S, Hutchinson. And his middle initial is E, if that helps you. Okay. So you were living with... James Hamilton and his wife, Priscilla Hamilton. Priscilla. You were all living together for a period yeah. of time? And plus my two other children and her kid. Her kid. Where, where was this going on at? Um, 1229 Woodside Boulevard. 1229 Woodside Boulevard. So they have one child, and her name is? Sarah. S-A-R-A-H. Woods. And then you've got three kids. Yes. James. Catherine. Why are you all living together? Because we were homeless, basically, going back. So you and, and Lewis. Yes. You were living with them. Yes. Because you were homeless. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm clear. <laughs> I remember what my question was. Uh, gagging someone, putting dirty underwear in their mouths, mm -hmm. and tying it up like that is sort of sexual because some people are in the bondage. And it's not like you took a washcloth that it's not attached to your genitalia ever and put it in their mouth. If he just wanted them to be quiet, he put like a washcloth, a shirt, so I went to a good little wash but, off. But, but putting dirty underwear in your mouth? He insisted on that. He's kind of sexual. Is he sexually abusing these children? Not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. But you see my meaning? Yes. You see where I'm coming yes. from there? Because he's, he's taking something that's touching their sexual organs and he's putting it in their mouth. So some people would see that as a, a, a kind of Perverted, perverted sexual thing. Yes. I, I, I don't know. I know mm -hmm. nothing about it. My children have never mentioned anything about it to me. Maybe he said something to them not to mention it to me. Mm -hmm. as, I, as I was saying before, his previous relationship, he was threatening to kill all of us. Mm -hmm. And before that happened, because we were trying to help Priscilla get out of the situation she was in with him. I'm going back to the dirty underwear thing. Because it wasn't even clean underwear. For some reason, it's dirty underwear. He yes. He made me get him out the dirty underwear. See, that's sexual. Do you, do you think he was doing anything sexual to him? Is there any clues that he was? Any clues? Any clues? I mean, did he, did he talk about, you know, no, like the kids to join us in our sex act? No. He wanted them to watch. He wanted no. to see them naked, anything no. like that? Yeah, I was still trying to figure out why he wanted dirty underwear. Why couldn't he just... Why not clean? Why he wanted you to get it out of dirty. Yeah, I was still trying to figure out why dirty underwear too myself. Well, I guess that'd be a question you asked him, huh? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's something to interview the kids about. Is, uh, did, did, did he ever touch him and stuff like that? Or are they sexually abused? That is odd. So he, he's tying, he's upset. He's tying these kids up. And did he tie their hands behind their backs? He tied their hands in their feet, like they're laying on their stomach and they're like this. So they like all the time. Well, like, yeah. Well, it's, it's like their feet are, because. Well, their hands are like this, and he does the feet. Bends the feet back. Is it like that? Like this is their face, this is their arms? And yes, feet? yes. Oh. And then go one rope around the mouth. With dirty underwear? Yes. And he made you get the underwear? Yes. Did you hold him down while he tied him up? Nope. So they're laying in the closet hog tied. I sat there with smoking a cigarette saying, you don't need to do this. Goodness. And why did you do that? Because they used it and wasn't listening. They wasn't listening. And he was fed up with it. Okay, I'm going to have to start my listening. 
so Friday he's upset they won't listen to him. He hog ties him. Mm-hmm. Puts him where? Upstairs. He makes you get out dirty underwear. Yes. Told me to find the most dirtiest underwear ever. Most of theirs. Most dirtiest underwear ever. See, now I feel better about telling you guys to hold. So you go, do you really do that? You go through the laundry and look for dirty underwear? The I just found the closest one. The closest one. Okay. I wasn't looking to see if they were dirty. I just grabbed what he said. Okay. So when you get them out, the dirty laundry. Mm-hmm. Find the dirtiest one you can find. And you give them these dirty underwear, he does what? Uh, well, after he wraps them up, the hands and the feet, mm-hmm. we'll tie them up however he did it. Mm-hmm. He puts the underwear in their mouth after he wraps them up. Okay. He ties them up however it is. That's what, if it's, uh, I, I want to make sure I'm right on this. But I got yes. this picture. Their, yes. Their arms are back. Yes. Their knees are bent. Yes. Their arms, and then their hands and their feet are tied. Yes. 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 That's all tied. Okay. Then, uh, then, then what? Um, he sticks the underwear in their mouth mm-hmm. and then ties them up. Um, and broke around the mouth to hold the underwear in. Do you put the underwear in her mouth? Nope, I did nothing. Okay. You're, you're sitting there smoking a cigarette telling him not to do it. Yes. Okay. And okay. I didn't want to put my hands on him for him doing that because I didn't want to get basically beat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or shot because he... Now, how long now? I know little James. He gets the underwear out of his mouth a couple of times, and he's yelling, "Mommy, help me! I gotta use the bathroom." I gotta use the bathroom. I went to go upstairs mm-hmm. to untie all of them, not just the one. Untie all of them, mm-hmm. and he insisted on, "No, leave them be." He jumped ahead of me before I could even get up. Mm-hmm. Because we were sitting on the couch, mm-hmm. I heard James yelling something. I couldn't make it out. But he had said that when he went upstairs, James said that he was yelling for me to let him uh, untie him and let him use the bathroom. And like I told him, mm-hmm. you should have never tied him up anyway. Right. To just, and he's like, and then he was, that's when I told you, he told me if I was to go up there to untie them, to get, uh, he was either going to get rid of them or I would need to get rid of them. Okay. So did you go upstairs that time? Yes, I sure did. Mm-hmm. How long were they up there tied up like that? Um, well, it was long enough to where their hands were purple and numb. Okay. Purple and numb. Even, you might even might be able to see it, my daughter, mm-hmm. for instance, mm-hmm. and maybe they have the rope. Approach on mm-hmm. her wrist. You do. Yeah, we'll have to look at that, make sure. They might even still have them on her legs. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. So you go up there. And that's probably how she, they said my daughter looked like she had a black eye. Mm-hmm. I really couldn't tell because of the lighting. Mm-hmm. So that's probably why she's got a black eye. It's probably he might have hit her for doing something she wasn't supposed to do because he went upstairs several times because mm-hmm. he kept hearing noises. I told him to leave them alone. I'm about to go up there and untie them up because they, they don't deserve this. No, no. So you go up there and untie them? Mm-hmm. Well, where's he at when you're untying them? Sitting downstairs on the couch. Mm-hmm. Well, I went to have them come back downstairs this mm-hmm. week where I knew I knew where they were. After, especially after him tying them up, they would probably be scared shitless mm-hmm. of what was going to happen to them next. Mm-hmm. So I wanted them to go downstairs and sleep in the living room. Mm-hmm. He looked at me and said, I don't want to see the kids. I don't want to look at them kids. Keep them the fuck upstairs. Mm-hmm. I said, so they can't even use the bathroom? Because the bathroom is downstairs? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they have to go down the stairs through the kitchen to the bathroom. Well, through the kitchen to the laundry room to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And he would see them going from 
the laborers write their application, so he decouches on this wall. Right. He would see him walk into the bathroom. Okay. So you untied him. They came downstairs. He said, now he doesn't even want to see him. Now what happens? Um, I, look, I yelled up there. I said, please go to sleep upstairs. Mm-hmm. I'll be up every so often to check on you guys. Make sure you guys are okay. And make sure they were sleeping fine. They wouldn't have a nightmare from mm-hmm. what had just previously happened to them. Mm-hmm. And make sure they were breathing fine and all that. Mm-hmm. And plus, they kept saying, Mom, my hands are numb. Mom, my hands are numb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. He told them just to do this and do this to get the, I guess, the flood like Flood flow back in the... Flood flow back in? Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like I said, when I got two of them, mm-hmm. and I insisted on one of their prior two that to untie them, mm-hmm. and they looked at him and said, I don't care what you want, I am untying my children. Right. And when I went to get them, their hands were purple. Mm-hmm. And they had socks on and shoes. I couldn't even imagine what their feet looked like. I'm sure their feet probably was the same way. What were they wearing? Night clothes. Night clothes. Get ready. They did have clothes. If they had night clothes on, I was going to send them. I was going to send them to bed because it was um, around eight o'clock at night when it happened. Mm-hmm. When he started to tie up, and well, actually, it was around. I'm going to say anywhere from seven to eight because it was getting close to bedtime. They go to bed at nine. Okay. When you untie them, it's about seven or eight. No. When he t- started tying them up. Oh, okay. When you untie them, about what time was it? Um, almost bedtime. Which is? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. So they lay there for one or two hours. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you untie them at nine o'clock. Bring them downstairs, don't put them back upstairs, they come playing their hands are numb, you said squeeze your wrist, you know, move your wrist around, squeeze your hands, like that, get circulation going. Then what happens? Um, I went to go bring him, I told him to come back downstairs. Because mm-hmm. he made him piss himself too. Oh. So I made him change. I knew it was right. Change your clothes so you don't get raw and all that. I made them change their clothes. Did all three of them? Yes. Okay. I made them change their clothes because they had what they had on because we had went somewhere before that to the store or something. Mm-hmm. And normally I take all three of my children with me right. to go to the grocery store, doctors, whatever, unless they're in school. Because mm-hmm. um, I felt more safe when they were with me than leaving them alone. Mm-hmm. And especially after what, me telling you, you see why I'd rather keep them with me. Right. But, and plus with me being raped, so mm-hmm. I didn't, I learned not to leave anybody alone. Right. Well, especially a little child alone. Exactly. Um, so even when I went to do laundry, I took them with me. Okay. Um, and when he did want me to leave him at the house, I tried to hurry up and get what I had done. He did get that on the track. Sometimes he did want you to leave the kids at the house? He told me they don't deserve to go outside. And he or they don't deserve to go nowhere. Okay. So sometimes he would try to get you to keep the kids with him alone. Mm-hmm. Right. When you left them alone with him, when you got home, they were still the same way where I at. They were still in the corners. They'd be in the corners. Or they'd be wearing the same clothes. Did you yes. notice anything unusual when you got home? Um, to be honest, I really didn't. You didn't? Okay. I didn't even think about it. Right. Probably the dirty underwear thing. Yes, I didn't right. think about it. Right. Okay. So. Uh, they cleaned up because when you untied them, they, they pissed themselves. And um, uh, all three of them pissed themselves. All three of them. But like I said before, that James was asking to use the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And then 
the other two his guests said he told him no. Right. The other two didn't even bother. Right, because why? Because James didn't get it. So why would they get you? All right, so um, the other time they came downstairs, he said, no, you don't even want to see them. They go back upstairs. They didn't even get the chance to come downstairs. Oh, they didn't even make it downstairs. They were still changing their clothes. Okay. So they didn't get a wash off even because you don't have any water upstairs. No. So I, wanted them to get, I wanted them to get the clothes okay. and at least get a rag, something, mm-hmm. let me wipe them off All right. until the next morning mm-hmm. to get a bath. And he wouldn't even let me walk them downstairs. He even did. He wouldn't let them downstairs. So you cleaned them up the best you could upstairs. Yeah. Okay. So they they get cleaned up as best they can out of the soap and water, and uh, you leave them upstairs to go to sleep around. No, I let them upstairs to get dressed in their own rooms. In their own rooms. Okay. But they left the clothing upstairs, mm-hmm. and they were still upstairs. So I went downstairs and got some water on the rags okay. and started trying to wipe them off to get the, the urine right. off of them. Because mm-hmm. um, I know personally, I'm a female. I don't like to be wet. I don't. Right. It's Nobody smell. does. And I damn sure don't like to smell I like tits. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they clean up in their own rooms, they change clothes, and you come back downstairs. And sat on the couch. Sat on the couch. So I lit the cigarette, started smoking a cigarette, was mm-hmm. watching TV, trying to drown him out, right. trying to yeah. block him out. And you're saying brick wall, brick wall, because you're a brick yes. wall. And you're just yeah. responding. Okay. And, and then what? Um, that's when he said, I don't want to fucking see them. I don't even want to fucking look at them. So, I said, so you want them just to stay upstairs, not even come downstairs? So, I was hoping for the kid's sake and my sake that he was going to work because sometimes he works Monday through Sunday. I was hoping for our sake that he was going to go to work that next morning. Right. Because I was not going to leave him upstairs. So you were hoping Saturday morning he could work? Yes. Okay. Okay. And that's what I'm like. And I like that. You were hoping that. How do you kind of figure out what's going on in your mind? And and how can you share stuff like that? So you were hoping he'd go to work Saturday morning. Because he had said prior to that that he was Going to go to work, he couldn't stand being here. He mm-hmm. hated every last one of us. Mm-hmm. Okay, then what happened? And he said that he didn't, he didn't feel wanted. He don't feel loved. Just started going on around with a bunch of crap. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I was trying to block him out, trying not to listen to it. Mm-hmm. Um. I he just hog tied three kids in that upstairs. Why would he feel one of them loved? Isn't that, isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, where were we at? Uh, he, you were downstairs smoking a cigarette, trying to block him out. He said he broke wall. He said he doesn't feel wanted or loved. By none of us. By none of you. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm guessing because he started feeling like the love was saying. Right. Because, yeah, I did start changing myself, mm-hmm. like distancing and all. Mm-hmm. And we literally went like two weeks, no sex. Mm-hmm. So, what does that tell you? Right, it does tell something. I was mm-hmm. just, just trying to distance myself from him. Right. And he kept saying that he was distancing himself from him. Who would, from me, but I who would normally initiate sex? Who would normally in- initiate sex? Well, I would only do it when I wanted it. Mm-hmm. Um, when he wanted it, I didn't say no, nothing. Had he tried in those two weeks? No. Mm-hmm. He hadn't tried? No, because he... It was sick. I wasn't. 
Oh, he was sick. Yeah, because I wasn't trying to bother him. I mean, you're sick. I, I'm sick. Mm-hmm. When I was sick, I didn't want to be bothered. I didn't really want to be fucked with. I didn't mm-hmm. want nothing. I just wanted to be left alone, peace, quiet, loving on my children and at that. What a mom does. All right. So, anyway, he's, at, at this point, uh, he's feeling sorry for himself. You're not really feeling as romantic as you used to. And is that at the point when he says, if you don't get rid of kids out? Yes. Okay. Because that's when we started to, to start, we kept arguing mm-hmm. about the kids not listening and me not disciplining them. Mm-hmm. And me just make them stand in the corner and not beating their asses to see that sort of thing. Right. And as you can tell, he was beating their asses. Right. He's hog tying Well, he was beating James. Uh, I swear to you, when that boy died, from his face down, he was bruised. So you hit him in the body? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He had bruises all over him. I felt so bad for that little boy. Gosh. So, you decide it's best for you to get rid of him. Yeah. So I wouldn't have to keep listening to it. Or did you guys talk about how you were going to get rid of him? He had talked about getting rid of him prior to that. And if he got rid of him, how was he going to do it? He was talking about brush runs. He was talking about brush runs. Yes, he wouldn't tell me no details, nothing. So he had been telling you he was going to take him to brush runs. Yes. Didn't tell me how, what, nothing. Have you ever been to a restaurant before? Once. And that was only because you have a friend named Dean and Ashley that lives out there. Mm-hmm. And that was the closest bathroom. For the kids so you just went there to use the bathroom? Yes. Mm-hmm. How long ago was that? Um, it was, it's been a while. That's why I said I didn't know I was lost. Remember? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so when you were lost out there, you were in the wrong place. I typed in my GPS, Rush Run mm-hmm. Park. Well, it was there, the place that you ended up, was there a porta potty there? No. So it was the reason you wanted to be at the right place was about the porta potty? Yeah, the kids had to use the bathroom. Okay. While you were out there, Rush Run? Yes. Okay. Which kids had to use the Rush bathroom? All of them. But then James wouldn't get out of the car. He was scared, so eventually he was just probably going to pee himself. Okay. But he had to use the bathroom. He just wouldn't get out of the yeah. car because he was scared. He was Why scared. was he scared? I was going to leave him. He was right. Did you tell him you were going to leave him? I told him I had no choice but to leave him. What did you say to them? I'm sorry, but I have no choice but to leave you. Guys. What did they say? Well, as I said, James said he didn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The other two really didn't say anything. They asked where was the safest spot for them to go. Because John, James Hamilton told them they would get aid by a animal. I don't remember what animal it was. When did he tell them they would be eaten by an animal? Um, he told them that when he said it started saying he was going to get rid of them and take them to the restaurant. Yes, he said all he can do is just leave them there or tie them up to something mm-hmm. and leave them there and let the, coy- the coyotes eat them. Coyotes. And as I was saying, I didn't want nothing to harm them, hurt them, nothing. So James Hamilton was telling them that he was going to take him to Rashford and tie him up and let the coyotes eat him. Yes. Okay. So you took them to Rashford instead. Yes. Mm-hmm. And why not just let him do it, be the bad guy? Why did you do it? Honestly, I wasn't even thinking right nothing. 
Did you think coyotes would eat them? I was hoping they wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I don't know nothing about coyotes either, so. Mm-hmm. But you knew it was a possibility of coyotes. You just told, told them everybody that coyotes were going to eat me too. Would eat you too? Yeah. Why, why would they eat you? I don't know. So you told me to eat me. I don't know if you want me dead too or. Mm-hmm. Or what? So, uh, we've already been over the story when you dropped him off at, at Little James. He's holding on to the car. You dropped yeah. him. He fell. He hit his head. And that was what happened before that incident. Alright. Oh, really? The big question is what led up to this? That's what we really want to clarify. So, did the uh, now, when James told you in the wrong place, oh, it's because you were looking for the porta potty. Yes. All right, that makes sense now. Because in my mind, you were looking for the right place because that's where the boat ramp was and that's where you were going to drown. Huh? Well, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Because is the boat ramp there where you ended up at the porta potty? Yes, but I wasn't. But you were never going to do that. No. Because in my mind, it's like, why go there? Why go there? Why go there? And, and well, right. that's where I had remembered where the bathroom was at. But it was all about the bathroom. James's plan was to tie him up and let the coyotes eat him. Your plan was to drop him off and hope that the coyotes didn't eat him. Yeah, I told them to go in the, the bathroom and lock ourselves in there. You told them to lock yourself yeah. in the bathroom? All three of them, was it? Yes, I told all three of them to go in there. Okay. I even told... To take James with him, so I knew he was fine. Mm-hmm. I wonder why they didn't stay in the bathroom. They walked. They were walked. They were walked a quarter mile when he turned around and went back. Because they knew I was going to come back. How did they know? Um, because I would never take him there, and he had still been there months before without me. Oh, really? Yes. What's that about? Um, and the dumb not listening, and me letting them, he said, me letting them do whatever they want to do, because as I was saying, I don't like to hit them, mm-hmm. I don't like leaving marks, <clears throat> I'd rather just make them stand in the corner to <clears throat> make them know that they can't do that. So James had taken them to restaurant before without you. Yes. What did he do when he took them there? Ah. How long ago was that? Um, he's done... Actually, the government was at the hotel. At the hotel. And he would do it late at night. And nobody was, well, when he thought nobody was up. Late at night, he took them. He took all three. He took them all three of them before. Would they take them separately? Or yes, together? separately. So one by one, he has taken them all to Rush Run at some And had brought them back. What would he do to them once he was at Rush Run? I don't know. See, that makes me go back to the dirty underwear in the mouth thing. Is he doing sexual things to him at Rush Run? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Now, he would take all of your... I try to ask him, why did you take them there? And... I was planning on to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Exactly all he said. Today the kid And he would call me and I tell him to bring them back home. Right. How long will you be gone with them at a time? Well at that time we were staying in Dayton, so however long time it took them it took several hours, I know that, from Dayton to all the way to that same area. And that's the same area he would take them to any other time. Well, that was the same area we had stopped all together to use that bathroom. Was there ever an issue where the kids came back and later they got a urinary tract infection? My daughter has a lot. 
she get blood, blood in her urinary tract infection? Does she get blood in her underwear? I haven't seen no blood. How about the boys? Would they ever complain about being injured or their bottom hurting? Um, no, just James, he has stomach issues. Mm-hmm. He's constantly, like if he drank too much juice, like the sugar was bothering his stomach really, really bad. Mm-hmm. And I had took him to the doctors and they said it runs in the, the blood of the family because his dad, his dad, James's dad, Lewis, has the same issue and Lewis's dad has the same issue. Like it runs, get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It runs down the whole tire fairly. How often would you take the kids away for hours at a time and go to rush for Um, I'm going to say several times. Several times each? Yeah. I know for a fact he's taken two times. Mm-hmm. I believe he took actually all four, all three of them two times. Two times each? I mean, he'd be two different out. times, yes. And it'd just be them? Yes. Them alone? Yes. Would you would you take any of them to uh, like you said the little girls get uh, urinary tract infection? Uh, so you take her, them to the hospital? Or well, I did when she kept saying it it just it it hurt down there. Mm-hmm. I did take her to the hospital. They told me she had yeah. yeast infection. Mm-hmm. At that time, like I said, I didn't think any of raping none of that. She said she had. They said she had yeast infection. Um. Something else. But recently she just started that back. She started that when I was with um, Lewis. But that was because she wasn't wiping, and that's exactly what they told me. She wasn't wiping herself. So that, because I thought, like, how do you, I asked them literally, how do you get yeast infection? Because I never had it. And they was like, not properly washing your body, not properly washing, wiping yourself. So then I was like, well, she, I showed her how to get a bath, right. like, if she needs it, because she's about that age where she's got to learn somehow right. to do it on her own. Mm-hmm. And how old is she? Well, 10. Right. Um, because, I mean, she knows how to fold her laundry, mm-hmm. fold her blankets. Oh, okay. So I figured... She's going to have to learn how to do that one time. I mean, sooner or later, later. When was the last time you had an issue? Um, just recently. Hours. You can ask her now. She'll probably tell you her itches. And just now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, honestly, I ain't putting up all money in my And I went to, I told him I was going to take him to the hospital. He said no. Oh, he didn't want you to take him to the hospital. Now that makes sense, huh? Yep. Okay. So, you had... <clears throat> and I hate for my little girl to go to the hospital and go through all that testing ordeal. Because she's never, ever been through that, ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that can be an experience. Hopefully she hasn't gone through worse experience with, uh, with Big James. Um, so he says, you get rid of them or I will, you take them out there, and once again, you were hoping the coyote wouldn't get them. Now, did you and James, he knew where you were taking them, because there was going to be a bathroom there. Now, when you were leaving, and he told you to go back and get them, why did he, why did he tell you to go back and get them? Because... Like I told you, I wasn't doing nothing right. Mm-hmm. Basically, because I wasn't going to do whatever he had planned for them. I don't know what he had planned for them, but my intentions was not to harm them in any way. Mm-hmm. My intentions was to make sure they were in that bathroom, and when I left there, I knew they were in that bathroom. Right. But little, little James wasn't. Yes. He was on that gas ball. And the other two was trying their best. Mm-hmm. to get James in the bathroom with them. How do you know they were trying their best to get him? Because they kept saying, doing this same Bubby, come on. You saw him doing that? Yes. So you saw him laying on the ground when you left? No, he was, 
I set him on the ground. Right. He stood up trying mm-hmm. to get back in the van. Right. And before I got back in the van, I told him to get your brother and get him in the bathroom with you guys. Okay. Is it making sense now? And then they were saying, come on, Bob. Yes, on. They, I see him more out grabbing his arm, trying to get him in the back. But my big question is going to be, everything you've told me today, have you intentionally left anything out? Nope. But my big question is going to be, everything you've told me today, and you use Russian to... Actually, I was wanting another pop. Okay. I'll give you another pop after after the polygraph because it's got some caffeine in it and I want okay. you to be as calm as possible. And uh, we're going to take a break. Got to use your restroom. You can use your restroom. Well, just to let you know, when, if you see me, like, because you're probably able to tell my heartbeat racing fast. I will. Because I start to get scared. Mm-hmm. It, it, help, it helps me. Do you tell me I'll be okay? Yeah. Yeah, the, your heart rate really doesn't matter too much. We do look at it a little bit, but it's mostly blood pressure and sweat gland activity, a little bit of heart rate. Most of it, believe it or not, is sweat gland activity. When we tell a lie, and I'll explain it to you all in there. When we tell a lie, we we sweat in three places. Palms of our hands, soles of our feet, and our forehead. If you ever talk to anybody, they just start sweating in their forehead and they will look nowhere else, like off their face and their arms and everything. I start to get scared. Mm-hmm. My anxiety kicks in, and then it, I start feeling hot. Right. And like I need to cool off. Okay. What, what we do in a polygraph is there's a practice test at the very beginning to make sure everything's working properly. It's called an acquaintance test. Mm-hmm. Just to get you acquainted to the test, to get you used to it. Basically, are you going to ask me the same question before? We will review all the questions. There's okay. no surprises in the Okay. Polygraph. So I'm going to give you a practice test first just to get you okay. used to everything. It's a simple little number test. Okay. And then the questions that we've already reviewed, mm-hmm. I will ask you those questions. I'll ask you those questions in a series, and then we'll take a quick break, like, okay. a, like a one-minute break, while I grade it by hand. A break basically for me to, if I'm worked up to calm down. Yeah, because when you... When you're taking the test, you got to be perfectly still. So, and there's a blood pressure cuff on your arm. And during the break, I let that blood pressure cuff out, so there's no pressure okay. on it, so so your hand's comfortable. Okay. And then I'll, I'll start... So basically, you're trying to make me comfortable as possible without right. making me have to be painful or... Right. Try to keep it comfortable. And then I'll ask you the same questions in a different order a second time, and then we'll take a break. And then I'll ask you the same questions a third time. Because what I'm looking at is I'm looking for a pattern. Because the mind is super fast. The way we think is fast. And uh, and if I just get... Is it okay if I um, hesitate a minute to say something? Like I'm thinking of... You won't have to think about it because we've already reviewed it. You okay, would have okay, already okay. thought about it. Okay. So the answers will come quick. Okay. So... But anyway... I'm sorry. I'm asking you... So no, 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 it's good. None of this. It's I'm good for you guys. None of this. So I'm looking for a pattern. Mm-hmm. So I can't just ask you the questions once because maybe you had a random thought. But by switching everything around, say, well, this isn't a random thought. She's responding to the question. So that's why I have to give you the questions three times, at least. If you get the hiccups, start sneezing, get interrupted, I might have to give you the test up to five times. We won't do it more than five times because there's a little bit of stress in it. Um, we don't give after five tries, we'll just try a different day. We'll try later. Uh, but about everybody just needs three times. Okay. So three times is normal. Okay. Five times like usual. Any questions so far? Mm-hmm. Okay. We're going to go in the other room. We're going to do a little typing on the computer. Then we'll review the questions that I'm going to ask you. Okay. All right. Okay. As long as we review the questions before we yeah. even start the process, I'll be fine. No surprise. <laughs> Am I allowed to take this water with me? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I've been sick and my mouth constant dry. Why don't you wait here for just a second? I'll okay. Right okay. Just tell me when you're ready. Okay. Right.
911, what's your emergency?